This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Build and seal. Build and seal. Yes. Pile on in, pile on in, tag a friend, tag a friend. Microphone check one two one two. You know what it is, my it's your boy DJ Shane, Building Shakers. We are here again. Today is Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. But in my alternate version of the Matrix here in the rabbit hole, today is Titty Tuesday for all my top heavy ladies wearing that 36 double D. <laughs> we, we appreciate all the thirst traps, Instagram and Facebook pictures that you have up on your social media platform. I want to take this small time out to appreciate you. Thank you for giving us an abundance of cleavage shots during the pandemic and trickling into 2021. So for all my top heavy ladies, 36 double D, for me to you, I appreciate you. Yes, I do, honey boo boo. <laughs> but in any event, where my manners wouldn't be right if I didn't start the show in true form and fashion. Peace to all the melanated kings and queens in the land of Zamunda. How's everybody doing today? It's a very bright and sunny Tuesday and it's hot. Yes, Mother Nature, thank you very much. I don't know what the hell you was doing last weekend with all the goddamn rain and clouds and shit. You don't want to make up your mind whether you want your man Summer Johnson <laughs> to come on inside and stay a little while. You know what I'm saying? You had your fling with Jack Frost. You let him in a little bit. He gave you some halfway loving though. That's why the went the, the the temperature and the weather was a little shaky last weekend. So, you know, tell Jack Frost pack his Tims, and we'll see him in about four months. All right, Mother Nature, can you can you do that for us? Thank you. Bring on, bring some of Johnson in, and, and enjoy some of that good loving he's going to give you for the next couple weeks. You know what I'm saying? And give us some nice weather so we can go swimming and go to the beach and all that good stuff that we like to do in the summertime. <laughs> but anyway, how's everybody doing, man? I had a dope weekend. Uh, shout out to the owners of Dava Latin Fusion over there in Union, New Jersey. I had to go go over there and get on the ones and twos and do my dub dizzle. And a uh, happy belated birthday shout out to my man Chris. I know you had a good old time. I saw you drinking away all the drinky drinks. So shout out to you, my brother. I hope you enjoyed the birthday party. Hope you enjoyed the company. It was good vibes, good energy all the time over there at Dava Latin Fusion. So uh, shout out to Dava Latin Fusion. Shout out to Cat and Paul, owners of, at uh, Dava Latin Fusion. And also, um, last Saturday we were at Clove Lakes. The Building Shakers were at Clove Lakes for the 10th annual Fatherhood Matters 10th annual Family Fun Day. 
Shout out to the building shakers that was in the building. DJ Seven Spirits, DJ Big Blitz, Diverse the First, who runs that program. Shout out to everybody that I saw in passing. It was a beautiful thing. And also, uh, happy belated birthday. Shout out to Tahiri Swindle. What's up, mama? Uh, shout out to you. Blessings. Hope you had a dope, beautiful weekend. Full of uh, partying and bullshit and party and bullshit. I know you had a good old time, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to her. Uh, today's topic, if you read the title correctly, it is correct. In, in regards to uh, modern women out here. Do you want a husband? Or do you want a stepfather? And I have an interesting way of how I piece this together in my mind. In my version of the Matrix today. We're going to play a little game. <laughs> Ready, class? I want everybody to jack into this version of the Matrix. We're going to play a game. Watch how I tie everything together. For all my old school heads. Remember the game Super Mario Brothers? Classic. I think it came out 1985, 84, somewhere around there. For Nintendo, Super Mario Brothers. One of my favorite go-to games to play besides Pac-Man. But in particular, I want to keep it, keep it tight. So we're going to talk about Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers. You start off with three men. Right? You start off on World 1-1. Pretty much the first board is kind of like easy. You can breeze through the first board. You know what I mean? You have your mushrooms, your regular mushrooms, and you got your uh, your green mushrooms. And pretty much if you're like a, a gamer, a hardcore gamer, you pretty much know how to get men other than getting 100 coins. There's, there's a whole bunch of ways to get extra men. So watch how I tie this shit together. So we're going to pretend that modern women, Super Mario Brothers, you're Mario. You're making your way through the first board and, you know, progressing through the game. Because if you notice, after the first world, 2-1, oh, the game steps it up a notch. And the game gets harder. <laughs> so watch me work. You just can't turn on the game. And skip ahead to say board 4-1 or 5-1, 6-1. You got to start from the beginning. It has to be a starting point. So in relations, I'm, I'm going to tie it to relationships. Super Mario is the modern woman. Going through life, playing her game, and ultimately trying to end the game and rescue the princess. But in our version of the Matrix, the princess, the princess is the king. So to rescue the king, right? Cool. But as we know, in Super Mario Brothers, the world start getting harder, and we're just gonna call that real life in real time. It's different stages. So as the modern woman progresses through her life, depending on how she plays the game. She may or may not make it to the end and rescue the king. You know, from evil King Koopa. <laughs> the shell turtle. Right? The spike turtle. So, now let me break this down into categories. Right? Everybody that plays Mario Brothers is not the same level of expertise playing Super Mario Brothers. You have people who can basically breeze through the first board. We're going to call that high school. Breeze through the first board. That's high school. Right? World 2-1, we'll call that college. Right? But we're, even, we're going to skip ahead. Real life doesn't start till after college because some women and men they still have the lavish luxury of living at home and letting mommy and daddy take care of their responsibilities. So they're a little bit shielded, so they get to play play the game a little bit longer, right? But we're talking about modern women. So they breeze through the first board, breeze through the second board, playing the game, got a lot of men. About that, you should have about eight or nine, ten men around World 2-1. 
if you're playing your, playing your cards right, you have about nine or ten men by then. You know, all of the green mushrooms you acquire, uh, coins is there in abundance, you know what I'm saying? So, you should have about nine or ten men by World 2-1. Now, depending on how good you are of a player, meaning, how well do you engage with the dating world? How well? That's the game, right? It's the game that we play. It's called life. The game of life. But in my version of the Matrix Today class, we're playing Super Mario Bros. Shout out to Dre. Shout out to Dre. On the check-in. I see you, baby. So, after college now, this is world 4-1. This is the adult world. Right? And I believe uh, 4-1 in Super Mario Brothers, that's the bullet, the bullet world. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, all my Super Mario Brothers gamers. I believe uh, world 4-1 in Super Mario Brothers 1, I believe the bullet world is 4-1. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it makes perfect sense in today's show. <laughs> the bullet world. Right? So, this is where shit starts to get real in the dating world for modern women. Now, if you have been playing the game good and to the standard, you'll get past the bullet world. But the game only gets harder. But we're going to stay here in the bullet world. Right? Because 4-1 eh, is just a teaspoon. You know, a couple bullets here and there. Put you, put you, put you. You know, random bullets flying in here. We're gonna call those the ain't shit men. <laughs> those the ain't shit men. You know what I mean? Bullet here, bullet here. You gotta hop over a few. You know what I mean, ladies? You dodge a few here, duck a few here. Those are the ain't shit men in the bullet world, right? But you still have to get past World 4-4. Four four. That's the end. You know, where the music starts playing real fast. Dun, 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 And you're running in the castle and shit. And now bullets are coming a thousand miles an hour. These are all the ain't shit dudes. The dudes that look good. But, you know, he doesn't have the certain type of qualifications that you may like. Uh, he's not tall enough. He doesn't have enough muscles for you. He doesn't have a beard. I, I'm just going down the line of things that women tend to dismiss if in their version, in their mind, the man is not perfect. And I just want to say this one small thing for all my critics and detractors out there, all the naysayers, and basically for everybody who, who uh, jacks in into this version of the Matrix called the rabbit hole. Perfection is a myth. Perfection is a myth. It does not exist. Think about it for one second. The world is not perfect. And when I say the world, I mean nature. It has nothing to do with us right now. The world is not perfect. We have damn near six months of cold weather and about... Uh, give or take three, three and a half of hot. And then the rest is the in-between mediocre weather. That's not perfect weather. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's nature and that's the way the world works. You know what I mean? Unless you live in Africa or any other place on that side of the equator. And even if that, you still need precipitation and whatnot for wildlife to grow. Right? Cool. So anyway, back to the game. After World 4-4. If you are successful and beating the fire-breathing dragon and throwing bullets, and these are all the eight shit men, shout out to Simone on check, what's up, baby? You now have graduated to World 5-1, which is a relief, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, World 5-1 is, is pretty much a, a, a breeze through board. But the point I'm trying to get to is all of these stages in Super Mario Brothers are played different depending on the woman that's playing. Now, what do you look for, modern women? What, what do you look for when it comes to dating? What specific traits are you looking at when dating a man? 
And this is going to tie in two types of women. This is going to tie in my single women in today's today's date, 20, you know, 2021, today's year. And it's going to tie in my baby moms. You know what I mean? Your version of the game is a little different, right? And here's how I'm going to make it tricky. Because life isn't fair. In your version of the Matrix playing Super Mario Brothers, you get one man. That's it. Because you chose to have a baby out of wedlock with no husband. So guess what? You get to play this game with one man. No more, no less. In comparison to a single lady with no children, she starts out with three. And she has the ability to lose a man here and there or gain a few. You know what I'm saying? That means gaining her attributes and her qualifications, what she's going to bring to the table besides sex. That's another show. But she has the ability to keep upgrading herself, upgrading herself, upgrading herself, meaning she's going to be in shape. She's going to be the best version of herself all the time so she can make it past each level of life dodging you know the bullshit types of men that she's gonna date and possibly making it to the last world where she can save the king who's in the castle being held hostage aka her husband <laughs> right so cool and some some people may ask well, well shame why does the why does the baby mama only get one life in super mario brothers and i go well most baby moms most I may be wrong I, I will stand corrected if someone tells me otherwise but as far as I've been seeing for the past 40 to 50 years it seems like the women who chose to be baby mothers their lives are out of order and their lives is a little bit harder than it is versus a woman that played the game, how the game is supposed to be played, and her end goal is rescuing the king at the end of the game and getting her husband. That's game over. Cool. You put down the controller. You save the king. You breeze through all the boards, a blah, blah, blah. You manage not to get pregnant, a blah, blah, blah. You, you chose a career path, whatever it was. You, uh, Hold on. You stayed in shape. You remain inspirational, beautiful, submissive, cooperative, and you presented the best version of yourself as you breeze through the game of Super Mario Brothers. And you saved the king, and at the end of the game, you got your man, you got your husband. So you know what? Applause for you. Applause. Applause for the women out there that were raised decent. And I don't want to play the word game, you know, because that's another show about being raised in a two-parent dynamic. Although it plays a large factor on the type of results that you're going to get in regards to the type of man that you want. Now, part of the title of this show is do you want a husband or do you want a stepfather? And here's where it gets tricky. Being. That a woman comes to the game now. You only got one. You only got one man. Because now you chose to have a child out of wedlock, which takes away your three men. You get one, right? Now your game is going to be a little bit shorter, and your game is going to be a little bit harder because now you have another whole person behind you navigating through the game with you it's almost like a two-player version but you're playing it at the same time uh what, what's super mario brothers 3 the little uh the little mushroom person yeah you got the little mushroom person trailing you uh, through this version of the matrix that we call the rabbit hole so stay with me that's your child the, the mushroom rep the mushroom little to toadstool person that represents your child so now you have to play the game making very very conscious decisions because the decisions that you're going to make is not only going to affect you it's going to affect you and your child 
And we can play word semantics. We can put two children, three children, whatever. But for educational purposes today, I'm only using one. Right? Right. So understand this now. I'm going to bring it back to the real world. With the single chick versus the baby mom. Looking for a stepdaddy. Understand that women outnumber men on the planet of three to one. And understand that in regards to the dating scene, and I'm only talking about my melanated kings out there, I'm talking about my brothers. I feel compelled to talk about us because that is the reflection that I see when I look in the mirror. 51% of men, black men, are single and childless. Arguably, that's more than half. So, this is what our single women with no children and our baby mothers have to pick from. Now, there's an argument that the women who have children, they say, well, well, I chose this life of blah, blah, blah. And if a man wants me, he has to accept me and my child. We're a package deal. We come together. Okay. That's cool. Shout out to Shaquana on the check-in. 3J's creation in the house. What's up, mama? Uh, okay. We can... We don't, we don't have to argue that, but we can have a adult discussion about your situation. Meaning a woman that comes to the table with children and she had children uh, out of wedlock. So she's a baby mama. A man that is in this 51%. And I want to quote another stat too. Because it's in regards to our black men. 64% are in the working middle class. Black men. So arguably these two stats And if you don't know where I'm getting these numbers I'm not pulling them out of thin air uh, You can go to blackdemographics.com And cross reference all the numbers That are coming at you a thousand miles an hour uh, That's my go to website For all the uh, real time statistics About minorities and African Americans Us black and brown folks I always go to blackdemographics.com So you can always go there And cross reference any of the numbers That I'm throwing at you 100 miles an hour So In today's date 2021 In this year 51% of black men are single and childless And 64% of them are in the working middle class So that has to tell you something Because arguably that's way more than half That has to tell you That men Who make up these two statistics are holding out for marriage they're holding out they're putting their head down they're making the best version of themselves they're knee deep in their careers they're making their money and they're paying a hundred percent of the bills and they're taking care of themselves right right so now the argument is in reference to a baby mama why would a guy that makes up these two statistics want to entertain a woman who already has a child when his end goal is to look for a wife and pass on a legacy of his own? So it would make more sense for him to date a young lady who doesn't have any children. So he can pass on his DNA and leave his DNA footprint behind before he leaves the earth. That is basically the human plan for all of us, whether we want to admit it or not. The creator did not put put us here on this earth to just be by ourselves, make our money, buy jewelry, cars, go to the strip club and live your hot girl summer. (laughs) <laughs> That's what the creator did not do The creator did not put us here Just to frivolously take up time And then die alone That's not why he put us here <laughs> He put us here for a purpose To be plentiful <laughs> And leave your DNA behind That That is the purpose of, of human beings On the planet earth 
whether you're a man or a woman. But the argument is now, do you want a husband or do you want a stepfather? And the reality of it, the reality, I'm not saying that because you chose to have a child out of wedlock that your possible suitors for husband material is exhausted, but it's going to be a small pocket of men that will be willing to take on another man's child because that is a responsibility. It's a financial responsibility. It's a mental responsibility. It's a spiritual responsibility, especially if the other man, the other man's child, if that man is not current and active in that child's life, you know, and we can even go on a limb and say that, you know, maybe her baby father passed away, so he's not even in the picture anymore, and that's a extreme case that I'll use because I know of one young lady who she falls into that category. She was not married. She had a baby. She has a little son. I'll leave her name out of it because this is for educational purposes only. Uh, her son is, I think he's about a teenager now. He's about a teenager. But her baby daddy unfortunately passed away. So, if a man wants to get with that young lady, he still has to understand that he is going to have to raise that little boy as his own. Versus getting with a young lady that does not have a child. Her womb was not penetrated and a human being did not shoot out of her walls. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's what I think women do not take, modern women, do not take into consideration. No, we're not saying that you can't find a decent man because you chose to have a baby before marriage. But just understand your chances are not the same. And that's why I brought up the game uh, Super Mario Brothers. Your chances in this game called Super Mario Brothers is not the same versus a woman with no children. She already has a head start. She has a head start on you. And depending now, and we can get into semantics, depending on how she looks and what her body looks like, because ultimately men are visual creatures and that's what we look for first. That is your sexual market value. And, and I wanna, I wanna uh, segue for a second. It seems that some, not most, but some women, and this falls into both categories, the modern single woman or the modern baby mother. It seems like some women do not think that the way that their face looks, meaning fresh out the shower, no makeup on, no fake ass eyelashes, no crooked ass lace front, no raptor claws, none of this Freddy Krueger shit. How you look straight out the shower with no makeup on and how your body looks is ultimately what a man is looking at first. Initially, that's what he is look. This is how he is assessing you, based on how you look. It's it does not matter if you have. Shout out to Kevin Samuels on his uh, podcast. I love the way he he puts his sound effects into it. But it doesn't matter if you have a PhD, a master's, your doctrine, your associates. Your social economic status has nothing to do with your sexual market value. Your sexual market value is what you are naked. No makeup, nothing. Just you, your face, and your body. That is your sexual market value. Now this can be broken up into a whole bunch of categories because we all know it's like Sesame Street. One of these kids is doing their own thing. Now it's time to play our game. Yeah, this is called the game of life, ladies. And depending on what you bring to the table as your sexual market value, 
you're going to get the type of outcome in this game of Super Mario Brothers. This is the type of outcome you're going to get based on how you look. Initially, that's how the game starts. It starts fresh. And for women who don't have kids, yeah, you got a head start. You, you start off with three men. Cool. Fresh face. You're cute. You're in shape. Your bubbly personality. Men like to be around you. You're a little flirt. You're womanly like. You're very feminine. Men like to be around you. So you have no problem getting men. Cool. Now we'll take the baby mother. Sure. Someone found you attractive enough to shoot your club up. <laughs> Tear the club up. Tear the club up. He shot that motherfucker up. Ka, 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 ka. Cool. You had a child. Hey, having babies is a beautiful thing, but understand this. In our community, we have an issue here. And there's a saying that says it, it takes a village to raise children. Ultimately. And I think uh, our new generation of the millennials and the zennials have lost sight of this catchphrase that pretty much molded the black and brown community. I think they lost sight of that. It takes a, it takes a village. Meaning, you have to have your man in your life to create the nuclear family. Meaning, husband, wife, child. That's how you create communities. All this single, independent malarkey is ruining the caliber of women in our community. And that's just me being honest. Shout out to Lady D on the check and what's going on. Um, yeah, that single, independent way of thinking, which pretty much started... 1970, right outside the women's movement, you know, right outside the uh, civil rights movement, that pretty much spawned this type of uh, mentality. And unfortunately, I mean, we can call it a, a, a westernized version of a thought process, but it seems like it has infected our women, their, men their mentality anyway, because the world has sold our women a dream. You can have it all. You can have it all. The sky's the limit. You can have it all. It don't matter if you're if you're not an eight, nine, or ten. Hell, you can have it all. It doesn't matter if you gained a little weight. You can have it all. Come on down and get your husband off the pick a husband tree. Because husbands are out there in abundance, plentiful for you to pick after you finish living up your hot girl summer and running up your body count for your 20s. After you turn the humble age of 30, you can go outside in your backyard and pick you a husband off the pick a husband tree. This is that bullshit that we have sold women since 1970 because a quality was uh, being presented to the world. Women wanted a quality. They wanted a fair shake. They don't understand that the world works a certain way. The world works a certain way in regards to men and women. By no means, just by observable reality and observation, look at the black and brown community as a whole. We don't have a quality <laughs> across the board. We've pretty much gotten teaspoons of that shit. You know, and I'm not going to get into, you know, that black and white conversation today. I'm just pretty much focusing on relationships. Getting a husband or being a stepfather. So, point being is... You have to bring a certain caliber of qualifications to the table as a woman and as a man to get the kind of outcome that you want based on what you bring to the table. It's called cause and effect. I love them using the movie The Matrix because it's so relevant to the dating game. 
cause and effect. What you do, how you act, how you present yourself, you are going to get the outcomes that are coming your way based on what you're giving. You know what I mean? You can't be in, you can't be a hermit crab and live inside your house, inside your own safe space. I'm talking to the men now. You can't be a fucking uh, NBA 2K gamer all summer and then complain that you didn't meet any women this summer. Well, maybe if you put down the goddamn PlayStation controller and go outside, get your hair cut and put on a nice fit and go go meet some women, maybe you might get a different uh, outcome there, buddy. And same goes for women. If you want the kind and caliber of man that most women want, <laughs> we're not going to have that high value conversation today, but we're just going to say a decent man. Good good clean, good working, working class decent man. An average or above average man. You can't complain where all the good men at if you don't leave your 10 block radius. Honey boo boo. Sugar pants. You can't complain if you don't do something different. And especially how you are presenting yourself to this game. You can't show up in a bonnet. <laughs> Shout out to the bonnet crew. <laughs> you can't show up in a bonnet. And all of these amenities, I'll just say, to make you look like somebody that you're not. Because understand, in this game that's being played, men appreciate the authentic version of you. That's what they appreciate. They appreciate the authentic, uh, the authentic version of yourself. And as long as they know you're being authentic, you're being real, you're being feminine, you're cooperative, you're submissive, you're, 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 you're it's a feel good feeling. It's good vibes, good energy. It's always nice to be around you. And blah blah blah. You don't fight him when you walk in the house. He doesn't have to hear your mouth. A blah blah blah. You are appreciative that he took the time out to come into your world and you're doing your best to be the best version of yourself. Hey, that deserves a round of applause, right? Good for you, mama. Good for you. Keep your man. <laughs> because there are a lot of men out here that are looking for wives. And the amount of men that are out here that are presenting the best version of themselves into this beast that we call the dating market, a lot of them are not so willing to be a stepfather. And that brings you back to the meat and potatoes of this conversation. Being a stepfather takes a certain kind and caliber of man. So shout out to all the men out there who actually fill those shoes and took on the responsibility because you didn't have to to be a stepfather it takes a certain kind and caliber of man to raise another man's child and show them the right way so I think that ladies you have your choice you can't say life is not fair you can't say life is not fair and you're not willing to accept two kinds of men. You're going to have the men that don't want to fill those shoes. They want a woman that doesn't have any children. And that's fine. They want to leave behind their own legacy. Their own kids. Nothing wrong with that. Then you have the other type of man who doesn't mind. And trust and believe it's not a lot of men out there like that. It's a very small pocket of men, especially in, in regards to the high value men. We already know what those percentages are, 10%. That's it. It's not a black thing. It's not a black white thing. It's just a man thing. So we're not even going to get into that conversation today. This is just solely based on do you want a husband or do you want a stepfather? And just understand what you're bringing to this, uh, the dating scene. 
your sexual market value is not going to be the same versus a single chick with no kids and a baby mother with a child. Two different games, two different starting levels of Super Mario Brothers. That's where I started with my monologue. And you're going to have some different outcomes and the game is going to be a little bit harder. If all you baby mothers out there have not noticed, it's harder to try to capture the kind and caliber of man that you want because you have a child already and you had a child not out of the equation of marriage it didn't come from marriage you know what I'm saying so how a man is looking at you he's going to ask you these questions he's going to ask you well I see your son and or daughter is about seven or eight. Uh, why didn't you marry your baby father? You know what I mean? Why didn't you marry your baby father? Because ultimately, bringing a child into the world is a woman's choice. I, 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 always, I always hear this catchphrase, well, I choose to be single. I choose to be single. No, it's called you have a child and your choices are limited. That's the goddamn truth. Shout out to Elaine on the check. What's up, baby? Yeah. Women who don't have children, they choose to do whatever they want. They choose to live the kind and caliber of lifestyle that they want because they have the freedom and the choice to do so because they don't have any children. And then that now boils down to how they present themselves to the market. If you present yourself like a ratchet city girl, if that's what you're bringing to the table, you're going to get that type of outcome. Understand, cause and effect. This shit is so real. And I love using the movie The Matrix as a real life and real time example. People would be thinking I'm playing. No, this is real. <laughs> in, in, in this version of the rabbit hole, The Matrix is... The Matrix Part 1 is such a teaching lesson movie. Granted of being entertaining, but it's a teaching lesson. It's a teaching lesson. What you bring to the table, the type, in, uh, the type of effort that you bring forth is going to produce the type of outcomes based on what you bring to the table. Meaning the dating market, the dating scene. You can't come to the dating scene not ready to play, not ready to play the game. Oh, wait, well, you know, I'm, I'm going through my, my weight journey right now, and, and, and I ain't got my my career together, you know, kind of like in between jobs, and I just finished college, I got my degree, and, you know, I'm temporarily living at my mama house, or my grandma house, or da-da-da-da-da-da-da. The dating market don't want to hear about that. It's cutthroat. Either you're in the game or you're not. So the people that are playing the game, they picked up the controller, they are presenting the best version of themselves so they can possibly rescue the king and get the fuck out the game and get her husband. <laughs> That's basically what this Super Mario Brothers game is all about. The, the woman is Super Mario. She's making her way through this game of all the worlds, 1-1, one -one, all the way to the end. And ultimately, saving the king, rescuing him from the evil uh, Spike Turtle Shell, King Koopa. And walking off into the sunset with her husband. And that's the end goal for, I would say, most women. Most women dream about having, uh, you know, the nuclear family, husband, wife, child. That's that's the game that that we're playing called life. This is this is the game that most women want to play. They want to play that game. They want the husband. They want the lifestyle. That's what they want. But understand, in order to play this game, you have to move a certain way. You have to play the game a certain way or else you'll be exited out the game. You you will be exited out the game. If you have a child, before marriage your version is going to be harder you don't start with three men you start with one and your version will be harder because like we know it is very hard to be a single mom 
baby mom, however you want to slice it, when you present yourself to the dating market amongst all these single men, because they don't have children. They bring themselves to the table, polished. That's what they bring to the table. They bring themselves polished, ready to go, ready to play, ready to engage this version of the matrix called Super Mario Brothers. It's up to you to get through the get through all the levels, save the king at the end of the game, and the end result is you get a husband. And that's basically it. So you can't complain about the type of outcomes that you're getting based on how you're bringing yourself to the game. And everybody, you can take that with a grain of salt. You can take it to heart. You can take it how you want to take it. Today's uh, episode of The Rabbit Hole was a teaching lesson. It was a teaching lesson. Let me let me park my let me park my car. Today's version of the rabbit hole was a teaching lesson. And I used Super Mario Brothers, you know, to have a colorful uh, explanation. And I tied it to the dating scene of blah blah blah. Let me just move my move my camera up here. Get a get a fine look at this there ball right here, there ball. But in closing, in all seriousness, in closing, ladies, fellas, what you present to the dating market is is what you're gonna get. This is what you present is gonna be the outcome that is gonna be produced. So if you come to the game, you're the best version of yourself. You're in shape, you're eating healthy, you're taking care of your skin, you're knee deep in your career. You are cooperative, you're a communicator, a blah, blah, blah. Your end goal is marriage. That's what you're presenting to the, to the game. You're gonna get that type of outcome because two people with similar like minds, they're gonna attract each other, right? But if you come to the game, you come with attitude, uncooperative, non-submissive, you can be a dick, you can be a bitch, you can be an asshole, understand that those, that's what you're, that's the energy that you're bringing to the dating market. So you're going to be met with that same type of energy. <laughs> you're going to be met with that same type of energy and you're not going to like the version of the game that's going to be presented to you based on what you're bringing to the table. So, in closing, I will say this. Always be the best version of yourself when you're entering this dating market, no matter if you're single and childless or you are a baby mother, single mama, blah, blah, blah. Be the best version of yourself. Grab the suitable person that suits you, the best possible choice that you can make based on the qualifications that you bring to the table and exit the game and put your controller down, <laughs> right? So in closing, I always like to close the show with good energy as always. Uh, shout out to all the owners of BK Lobster, spreading love the Brooklyn way. Shout out to brother Ed, shout out to Rodney, shout out to Muff, Miles, Tone, Emmo. Shout out to all you guys. I love what you guys are doing, creating uh, employment opportunities for people in the community that look like us. So shout out to you. And if anybody is wondering, where can I go to get some of this beautiful seafood cuisine? Uh, if you're in Elizabeth, you can go to 11 Bond Street. If you are in Hoboken, you can go to 732 Washington Street. And if you are in Brooklyn, you can go to 572 Myrtle. And like I said, the the menu is so dope. Try the Biggie Roll, the bed style Roll. Uh, also try the Crown, House, the Crown Heights Roll and the Connecticut Roll. Those are my three, my three favorites. So knock your socks off, your taste buds, and do backflips. You will not be disappointed when you go down there. Uh, like I said, we have some events coming up. In the next couple of weeks, uh, June 26th, the Building Shakers will be at Tri Lounge. That's 1983 Clove Road. Shout out to Brother Javante over there at Tri Lounge, a vegan restaurant. 
We will be there. We're bringing back Grown Folk Game Night on June 26th. And it will be sponsored by Lena's Link. So shout out to Miss Selena. Shout out to you. She's gonna have the drizzinks on deck. I heard the I heard the Nemos. The Nemos is popping. That's what I that's what I heard. That's what a little birdie told me. The Nemos. So make sure you clear your calendar. Mark us down for June 26th. If you're not doing anything, come on down. Enjoy all the games that we used to play. Enjoy the music and enjoy the menu and the drizzings that we're gonna have on deck. And also, you know, the building shakers will be every friday each and every friday building shakers fridays uh flow fridays miss you baby girl 772 richmond terrace shakers on the terrace your boy will be in the building each and every friday so you already know what it is man and this concludes and wraps another episode of the rabbit hole another episode of the rabbit hole uh let me take you out with our theme song produced by myself fitz the producer and brother angel and let me just cue this up really quick. Today is Tuesday. Today Tuesday! <laughs> Preferably in a residential area. Shout out to all my haters. Woo! I love you guys. You guys make me relevant. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to the Lady Shakers. Shout out to YOLO. Slim. Miss Rail. I see y'all. Audrey Green Eyes, how's your little one? How's Lil Juan? How's being a mom? I know you're enjoying it, huh? Hey. 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 I think I'm gonna need somebody to write a song to this. songwriters I'm gonna need a hit I'm gonna need a hit record to this all my R&B artists shout out to everybody that was on the check-in shout out to Elaine shout out to Donna shout out to Shaquana shout out to Dre shout out to Simone everybody that was on that check-in you know what I'm saying this is your boy DJ Shane this was another episode of Rabbit Hole Building Peace yeah.